you know, break this down and uh, we're gonna go back to the beginnings of chapter 25 and work our way up. So the subject, again, uh, chapter 25 is electric potential. So again, um, it, our, our job is to uh, make our visual of everything, of all this physics uh, as clear as possible, define standards, define a convention, what's high, what's low, stay with it. And then from that point, uh, <clears throat> we can derive all the necessary equations uh, that we need to discuss electric potential and things will be that much easier. So let's start off with a so-called like battery or just a region of high potential to low potential. So again, positives. And our convention is electric field from positive to negative. We look at the proton or a positive charge. We can look at a negative charge, but our standards Define a convention, define a standard is the positive charge or a proton. Okay, let's, okay, we have electric field lines that move like this from positive to negative. This is so called high potential, this is low. This will be not zero, this would be zero. So let's just uh, kind of do this. This is not equal to zero, this would be zero. Now, like I said before, when we're doing these practice problems for the electron, this could be not equal to zero and that can be zero. But again, let's keep our standards so that we, when we go from a positive charge or a proton to an electron, things are very consistent. We don't have to make any switches. That's why when we do something like, when we get into electrodynamics, when we have charges moving through magnetic fields, or moving charges create magnetic fields and vice versa, we want to define a conventional uh, standard, which is uh, the right-hand rule that will allow us to figure out where the direction of the magnetic force is going to point when we are dealing with um, <clears throat> positive charges and negative charges. So when we do just one conventional rule, and know where the magnetic force is going to be pointing for a positive charge, all we have to do for the negative charge is switch the sign, switch the direction. And that's, that's why conventions are important. So um, with this being said, our standard was, uh, let's say this would be uh, point A, and then this would be B, from initial to final. And we say something like um, the work done by the electric field for protons, because protons are going to go from high to low, it's going to lose potential energy. So delta U, like you said, Edward, it's going to be losing potential energy, electric potential energy. Much like when we had WG, the work done by gravity is going to be equal to a negative change in gravitational potential energy. We just change fields. We go from gravitation, gravity field to an electric field. And this would be our standard for protons. Now again, for the electron, it'll be the opposite case. The electron, if it moves up or when it does, let's say that we have an electron and it goes up this way, well, it's gonna be moving against the field. So this, the work done by the electric field would be negative because as we said earlier, when the fields and displacement are in opposite directions, the work done by that field is negative. And so as you did also say, Edward, we're going to increase the uh, potential energy for the electron. And we can say that with confidence because we have, right? We have defined a standard where high and low is. We're not switching around. I can essentially say that this is high for electron and then that's low. Well, then I get back this. I don't change anything at all uh, from proton to electron, but not like not that it's counterintuitive to say that this is high for the electron. It's just a little bit weird, maybe. So let's keep things uh, standardized, make the top high, make the bottom low. 
positive terminal high, negative terminal low or zero, ground, right? <clears throat> so this would be uh, work done by the electric field is going to be negative, uh, increase in the um, potential energy for the electrons. So now, for either case, whether the potential energy is going to be positive or negative, we can make a standard, we can make a definition of what potential energy is for either charge or other type of charge, whether it be positive or negative. We know that delta U is equal to work, you know, whether it be positive or negative. And since it's going from an initial point to a final point, we know that we can get uh, the change in electric potential energy or change in potential energy here as the integral of force dot ds. And what this basically is, I'm, I'm, I'm integrating uh, work between initial point A to final point B, and the result of that will be a change in potential energy. And so this will be the work done. This will be the force, electric force, electric force multiplied by displacement, where ds is every little element of displacement. This will be a ds and another ds, and we add all the ds's together, and we get just a displacement. Um, so yeah, s is just a placeholder variable. You call it whatever. You can call it x. We would typically typically don't call it x, y, or z because we're generalizing. It could be any direction. So this is the general equation for finding a potential energy when you integrate work from initial point to final point. And has very, uh, you know, F dot S or delta S for your DS. So DS is your delta S. So you know, this would be the algebraic version of this. So since we're dealing with the um, electric field, We'll go A to B, and it's regular, you know, your, your test charge Q naught. It can just be Q, it doesn't matter. So this is my um, electric force equation because I know uh, my equation for electric field is gonna be force divided by charge. And so force will be charge times electric field. Dot DS. So that's a general case. And then, uh, when we do this integral, I'm not gonna explicitly do it here. Charge is a constant. I cannot take the integral of a constant, so I bring it out. And that's E dot ds. And E is uniform as well. That's gonna come out. But for uh, a, a purpose I'll, I'll define here in a second, I'll just leave E in the integral and then um, we'll deal with it explicitly. Uh, when the time comes. So this is basically our change of potential energy in general, whether the uh, uh, charge is positive or negative. Change in or change of P in general. You guys following that? Yeah, you know, so far. Yeah, any questions okay. as we go along? Uh, <clears throat> so now we're gonna take this general potential energy and look at a positive test charge because that's our standard. We're gonna look at the proton or a positive charge going from A to B. How does this formula in the box uh, change? What What's going on? And then, uh, can we relate it to static potential energy, which will in turn relate to static electric potential and so forth. So for a positive test charge moving from high to low potential,
we are going to be losing potential energy from A to B. And we find A is the high and B is low. So let's take delta U equals Q naught integral from A to B, B dot DS. And as I mentioned, E is uniform. The electric field is uniform, makes it life simple. Plus if that was changing, it gets you know, a little ugly. Uh, so Q naught E integral from A to B. Ds, and then since A is higher than B, and we'll see something happen here. Q naught E, so final minus initial B is going to basically be zero, and let's call A the you know highest point of displacement. We can call uh, the highest point of displacement just D. For A, we can say zero minus A, but we'll just call it D because uh, we want to generalize whether it be A to B, C to D, E to F, <laughs> right? Just call it D. So basically here is positives, here is negative. A is here, but it's a distance D from zero. So you got, got that. So this is D. And so, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just leave the Q not in there. I, I'm just you know, standard, and this is standard charge, a test charge as we see relative to our text, but it doesn't matter if you call it Q or Q not. It's a charge, right? Um, so we'll say Q not E. Well, let's see. Uh, let me get this out of here. I'll say Q E. D, but that's negative, right? Negative QED. So the potential energy change, change in electric potential energy, if you will, which is not the same as potential difference, we'll see why, mathematically, the change in the energy is equal to negative QED. See that? So the first term goes to zero, the second term is negative. So therefore, the work would be equal to what? What's the equation for work? Yeah, where you said it earlier. So if this is negative, work must be Yeah, you can speak it. <laughs> be, it work will be positive uh, because work is equal to negative delta u. Perfect. So work is equal to negative a negative, Oop. which is q e d. It's the opposite always. And this term here. in the integral is what we call change of potential. We call that the voltage, we call that delta V, which goes back to our sample problem where we had work is equal to Q delta V. QED and QV, same thing, Q delta V. And we'll see that explicitly um, in a moment. But that's where we get uh, the work and energy, the relations, at least the uh, expressions. Now let's just even uh, talk about the electron. So we did that for proton or the negative charge of this to the electron. Well, delta U equals Q naught integral from B to A. 
we're not switching this around because we'd be redundant. Because, you know, if we're going to set a standard, set a convention, it, it, it's not effective for us to keep changing the standard if we go from charge to charge, because we'll be all over, <laughs> all over the place using right hand rule and left hand rule. We'll just do right hand rule and switch the sign. So del delta u, but don't worry about the right hand rule. I'm, so does the integral mean the signs the opposite in A and B are switched? That's right. The the signs will will switch out. So uh, we'll have q naught e comes out of the integral, and so therefore final is positive, as as you did say there, Jeremy. And uh, d minus zero because b is at the zero potential, and a is at distance d. So exactly. So we have q naught e d because the electron is gonna be gaining potential because our standard is high, positive terminal. I'm, I'm gaining that energy back. And that's gonna be very important when we're talking about circuits. When we're talking about um, positive charges going from positive terminal all the way to negative. And the catalyst or the, the chemical uh, reaction in the battery gives energy back to the charge, lifting it up to high potential. Now, the exact mechanism of that, I'm not, I'm not sure of that. I'm, I'm not going to speak on that, although it's not important. I give that to the chemistry people. But the charge is going to get energy back. It's going to go from negative to positive, just like we're doing here in this interval, Q naught ED or QED. We're gaining potential. So since this is this way, Delta U is equal to this, work is going to be the negative. The work for the electric field on an electron will be Q negative Q E D. Opposite signs. And yep. So let's go back to uh, that integral again the general integral, delta U equals Q naught E dot DS. We'll have delta U over Q naught equals to, well, this change in potential energy per charge given a new term. This is a defined as, if you will, as change of potential or the potential energy for this charge that exists between points A and B. So we have something called delta V, potential difference, defined as change in potential energy over Q naught, which is equal to A, B, E dot DS. That's why I said that the integral part is equal to this. just defining new terms. Oh, instead of saying, okay, change of potential energy per charge, I uh, call it potential difference. Something nicer, easier. Which is equal to this, or we just call it potential difference. It's a difference of potential. Like in that sample problem, I had nine volts first, I had negative five, there is a difference. If I have positive nine and positive nine, they're static, they're gonna be at the same point in space nothing to talk about, it's irrelevant. Uh, I'm at an equipotential surface. If you remember that last time, I'm, I have a surface at the same potential. I have electric field lines going through one sheet and okay, but I don't have a difference in potential. So uh, I have an equa potential, potential of equal potential. <laughs> So we'll, we'll get back into the equipotential surfaces as we go along. Um, so if that's a potential difference, delta V, final, in our case it's v, uh, B, this is a potential difference. And remember last time we talked about how potential difference is not the same as change in potential energy? Well, you can clearly see that. 
they're related, they're directly proportional, but they're not equal. Right. Um, just to kind of reference the, the part of section one at where you have the book, it says, potential difference should not be confused with difference in potential energy. Well, of course we can see it, right? The words on the screen, screen page, fine, but it's important that you know we can derive it. We can see that it's clearly not equal to each other. But when we are going to move this charge from A to B, now we have a difference in potential energy because now we're going from one state of potential energy to a to a uh, final state of potential energy. This delta V, which is potential difference, is also called voltage. Voltage has nothing really to do with the charge's motion. It's, it's there whether anything's moving or not. You have a battery that's sitting on your table. There's one positive terminal, and negative terminal. There's nothing, there's nothing moving yet. Unless you put a wire between the terminals or some other external agent is gonna get those charges inside to move. So delta V is just a state of being, potential difference. And that's why people have confused uh, voltage with current. It's not. Voltage is static relative to uh, current. It's dynamic. I mean, the charges are moving uh, by some mechanism. Conductive wire, metal, or otherwise, you know, <clears throat> some other agent just causes charges to move. Um, so, and if we look at this equation, we can solve for delta U, which is Q delta V, which is by definition equal to work. And that's why we use that equation for our sample question. Because we know that work is equal to delta U, but then, but then uh, it could be positive or negative depending on um, where the charge is moving. Is it moving from high potential to low? Well, I'm gonna be negative delta U, positive WE, the work done by the electric field. And if I'm going from low potential to high, then work will be negative and delta U positive. So we're back at that point. So now let's take this and look at static potential or electric potential. This is blah, blah, blah. Electric potential difference, potential difference, voltage, same terms. But we can do this too. V is equal to U over Q naught. This is electric potential relative to some zero level. So therefore I can have, let's say, uh, make this as easy as possible. Say I have a charge here and then I can define electric potential at this point relative to zero. So I can say I have a V initial, whatever. I can have electric potential here. And we're gonna see very soon uh, that this electric potential does indeed depend on distance r from your ground state. Some point in space, some, some point you define as zero. Okay, so this is the difference. This is the static electric potential relative to some common reference point or zero level. Um, okay. So if delta U is Q delta V, mm, let's see, I'm gonna expand this out. So delta U, um, just see it all at once again, is Q naught, A to B, E dot DS. So this is Delta V basically, as we can see right there, it's just Delta V. 
potential difference, difference between A to B. Charge, charge, Q, Q not, same, same. Yep. So if it's static, U, there is no change. Uh, there, there, there's no displacement. There is no difference in points. It's, it's the energy at that point relative to ground. So this U, this delta U here, uh, for U just becomes Q naught E dot S, or S is this the displacement variable. If you are uh, watching, so paying attention to this uh, deeply, uh, this is electric potential energy. Well, gravitational potential energy, mass times gravity times height. We go from mass to charge. We go from gravitational field to electric field. We go from static height to this height, but same thing, same thing really. You can say Q naught E H. It doesn't matter. This is relative to some zero. So is this. Zero level reference. That's our reference level. Different potentials. Because I'm at different levels. Yep. Okay. So then, you guys see that There's, it's it's a it's uh, it's an analog. It's like exactly the same, except with the electric case is positive and negative. We have to make sure we know where we're going. It's attractive and repulsive forces, but uh, overall. Conceptually, it's uh, about the same. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to take this equation and do something more with it. Okay, so this sorry, UE is going to be equal to QV. This here is just V. This is delta V. V. Delta V. Electric potential, change in electric potential. Electric potential difference, uh, potential difference, uh, voltage, blah, 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 blah. Same, same. Well, V will be, I'm just going to say U over Q. Q is not the same. That's equal to E dot S because we see that we're solving for a V, which is equal to E dot S, U over Q. The equation for the electric field, KQ over R squared, you know, the electric field uh, in terms of the Coulomb constant. Uh, we're going to do uh, R squared or S squared. It's just the displacement. So I can change this to R, whatever. S squared, S. And so that goes away. And I'm left with one thing here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, for, for conventional sake, R squared R, because it doesn't matter. It's saying, I'm going between S to zero, R to zero, D to zero. It doesn't matter what you call the displacement. This is not squared. This is squared. Go back to the equation for electric field. It's KQ over R squared times E dot R S. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and so this becomes KQ over R. This is another equation for electric potential. 
relative to some point in space. I have a charge and I want to find the potential at a, a distance r away. And that's what that's saying here. So this, which is equal to u over q. This depends on what you have in the system. Do you have potential energy and charge? Use this, kq over r, use that. And this is gonna be important for us when we go to weird charge distributions. Right now, this is the potential from a point charge to any point in space. Very similar to electric field. This is just setting up a, a region, basically, it's setting up a region for that, for that electric field to operate through. That's more or less visual language. You know, not, not to be taken exactly literally, but electric potential is just a space by which this charge can throw out potential to some point. Now, if you want to talk about electric field, okay, now we have a medium through which an electric force can act. <clears throat> so we'll see uh, why a lot of problems start off with potential and go to electric field and then from there to electric force and then from there to work and then so on. You get the acceleration of a charge, becomes kinematics. So now you go from some arbitrary static space. I want to find the potential anywhere. Then um, if I want to find the electric field then I take the derivative, we'll see that with respect to that, uh, that space. And I know that my, my field is going to be uh, uh, operating over that uh, same space. Um, but that's pretty much your electric, electric potential there, which is equal to this. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, so potential difference, not the same as change in potential. I was gonna write some other verbiage about that, but we can clearly see in the equation that it's not equal. Right there. So let's now move on. Um, Well, this bit about electric potential surfaces real quick. You know, just basics. So you have a point here and you have two charges at the same level. Well, they're gonna be at the same potential. So whatever this potential is at this point, relative to ground, uh, let's just call that initial. And let's call this guy a final point. Well, the electric potential from this guy to ground is gonna be less than these two guys, they're at the same potential. We also know, now this is not a field, it's just a potential, the space through which a field can operate, basically. We know the electric field comes all the way, starts off with positive, goes to negative from any charge to some other point in space. And this, in this case, it's going away from positive to negative terminal. Well, well, if these two charges, let's say we have two charges here, and we're looking at them at the potential that they throw out from this point to this, this ground state. We know that at this plane, at this level, that the potential is the same. So what we can define what we call an equipotential surface. This is just an arbitrary surface or um, 
plane that exists at this level. And the reason why we draw it just on another um, esoteric level is that we're trying to see uh, how much electric field would go through this region at this point. So this, we would say, okay, we just, you know, like when we go back to Gauss's law and we're talking about flux, we're trying to figure out how much field is gonna go through this particular surface at the same potential. This is why it's called an equipotential surface because these points all along this surface have the same potential. Equa potential surface. And then Edward, you see in your textbook on page 695, the different surfaces. This has got a potential, that's got a potential and so forth. You know, different regions through which this field can go through. Is there field, because we, set, just because we define a potential, we can have a potential without a field. We don't need to have a field in order to have a potential. It's like, I, I used to say like, potential is like your ability to set up a field, but it's really just uh, an arbitrary, an arbitrary space by which, through which the field can go through. But it, no, no field necessarily has to be there. Right? So, I mean, that's basically it. They're not the same. Proportional to each other, not the same. So these little guys, you have the equipotential surfaces, all different arbitrary surfaces at the same V. This is, you know, you can call this V1, this is V4, V2, V3. All right, we're going to go now to the concept of finding electric potential from two or more charges. And then from there, we're going to find the potential energy between two or more charges. And, uh, and from there, we'll, let's do it. Let's get into some derivatives. And um, which basically, we're, we're just taking the same concept, the same equation, and looking at it in different ways. So essentially what we do is like the thing with physics, you, you can get down to the core. What is the theme? What's going on here? Like at the grassroots, something's going on all the time between these two points. Uh, I can define potential energy, I can find potential, change in potential, work, electric field, force, all between these two guys. And uh, we'll do several things. And these surfaces, they can become arbitrarily shaped. Lines, surfaces, volumes, disks. Oh, okay, I have a, a disk of a particular charge. I wanna find the potential some other, some other place away, some distance R away. What's a disk? Well, now I have to, Use my uh, surface charge density relationship, integrate that, uh, that term with the, the dq there, uh, it would be sigma dA. Do an integration uh, over that term, and I can figure out what the potential is going to be at some other point. Well, we'll get into that. Uh, okay. So to us, maybe I won't just do sections because it looks different. I'll do electric potential and potential, potential energy due to several point charges, okay. but 25.3, yeah. <laughs> follow along, I guess. Um, <clears throat> we 
We know that V is K Q over R in terms of the Coulomb constant. How about the V for two or more charges? It's superposition. It's the same thing that we've seen before. You just add things up. I wanna find the universal potential energy uh, for several masses in a system. Okay, you, you group all the masses together and you just add the potentials relative to each other. Same thing goes here, get the electric potentials relative to each other. Again, potential, electric potential this, not the same as in a uh, field. Right? It kind of like, I mean, in the gravitational sense, Um, you can kind of make this up. I mean, it's something that's not commonly talked about, but the analog for like gravitational potential, you can give it a new variable, call it K for Kelly equals G M over R. But there's, you know, it's really, um, it's not, not common to, you know, talk about this, this concept of gravitational potential, but um, uh, talk about potential energy and change in potential energy gravitationally, um, not like gravitational, uh, potential. So uh, what I'm saying is like, we, we, if we had like, uh, we could have the analog between, this is electric potential. And then say gravitational potential will be K equals G for the gravitational constant, mass divided by radius. And that would say, that would be your gravitational potential. Very analogous to this. But I'm going to leave that uh, alone for a second. I'd like to look that up myself and um, see why we don't uh, necessarily talk about gravitational potential. Uh, I can only just say, just, I'm just being intuitive right now until I know if the full answer, if there is one. Well, charge is kind of intrinsic. It's in, you, know, you can have specific charge, positive, negative. But for mass, doesn't seem to work that, that same way. Because there's kind of like no uh, intrinsic mass. But again, that's just my side side notes. You know, nothing side thoughts. You don't have to worry about it. I'm just I'm just thinking things through. Um, we understand we can get this. What would, what would be the analogous gravitational potential equation? So again, I'm gonna research this even more. See if there's any any uh, more I can say about that. All right. Um, so let me erase this. Okay, so electric potential, how about for two or more charges? Well, it'll just be V equals K and the sum of all the charges uh, and all their distances from each other. So let's say we have charge here, charge there, and this charge. So I wanna find the electric potential at some point P due to all these charges. Well, I would just sum up all of the potentials. So this would be Q1, Q2, say Q3, and 
Mr. Kelly, is this like a rip off of center of mass or something? No, we don't have to worry about center, center of mass or center of mass with these charges, but this is just a, like I have a point P somewhere in space. And, I, and if I wanted to find the electric potential due to all these guys, I'd have to just uh, sum all their distances away from P. And that's how I would get the collection, the total potential due to all of these guys. So nothing to do with center of mass. When we started the electric field, one thing I thought about was viewing our planet as a charge that has electric field around it. But no, I mean, that's, that's perfect, perfectly good thought. I mean, you can visualize anything. It's not every short change. You, you can imagine anything as long as the concept I mean, uh, well, not as long as the concept is proven. I mean, no, uh, you're restrictive. I mean, with the concepts that we that we have, imagination is unlimited. I mean, you can. That's that's quite all right. So that's what's meant here: uh, the electric potential due to all of these um, charges. That what at least visually what. It looks like. Uh, and one other thing, electric potential is a scalar, so it's just a number. It doesn't have a positive or negative potential. It, that's the thing that different that differentiates it from electric field. The electric field can be positive or negative. Uh, okay, what about potential energy of a collection of charges? So it's a potential energy of the system of charges. So let's say I had um, one charge here and let's say, I, you know, let's say I have Q1 and Q2. And I wanted to bring Q2 in from some very large distance. Uh, well, I have to have some outside force to bring Q2 in. Q1 is gonna give up a potential called V1. Some outside agent is gonna, you know, I say that these guys are the same sign. Whatever outside force there was to bring Q2 in, the potential energy of this system, let's say this is very far away, R is going to infinity and my external agent is gonna bring Q2 in to some point P you know, later on, say Q2 is here. Well, then the potential energy of this system is just going to be the work from charge one. Um, multiplied by the potential of charge two. So that's the work that's needed to bring charge two from some very large distance in. So let me uh, just say that um, another way. We know that potential already is Q times V, V is U over Q. And we know that U will be able to work that technically delta U. Uh, we also know that V is, and I say that this would be uh, the, the charge in question. So the work done by charge one, um, times the potential thrown out by uh, Q2 is basically uh, gonna be equal to the uh, potential energy of the system between charges one and two. So just to take that further, say that this was Q1, we know that this is gonna be V2, which is what we got up here. So this is gonna be Q1 times Q2, and we know that there's a Coulomb constant there divided by distance R. And this distance R is the distance between both of these charges. So this distance here, we call it R12. Because uh, uh, you can 
kind of just think about Q1. Q1 is not bringing in Q2, but some outside external agent, some outside force is bringing in Q2 from infinity all the way to some arbitrary distance R away from Q1. And when that happens or after that happens, the potential energy that exists between one and two is gonna be given uh, by this equation. That, this equation, but this same equation simplified. Q1, Q2 times K over R12. So let me just uh, define that. So U is K Q1, Q2 over R12, R12. Distance between the charges. Q1, charge one, Q2, charge two. And K, the uh, electric constant, and U is the energy of the system. So this is like your static potential energy, but the reference point is not zero, right? It's not some zero level, it's just the, the energy is between these two points over a distance R. And as R increases, the potential energy between these two guys is going to decrease, you know, if R equals infinity, there is no potential energy, that sort of thing. So, because these are inversely related. Because again, the, the example was, okay, Q2 is very far away. What do I, what kind of energy will exist if Q2 is close to Q1? Some outside force brings in Q2, brings it to an arbitrary distance where this U can be defined right? Because we have to have some distance that's other than infinity or zero. And that would be the energy between the charges. So going back, electric potential from multiple charges would be the potential set that all those charges have at some arbitrary point. This would be the electric potential for one charge at some point, charge at P. The other case, Two, three, here's P. Well, now we're talking about that. Potential energy would be charge one, two, three, like this. The energy within the system, not at some point. So if you wanna break the system up, you have to supply energy from some outside source that's greater than this potential energy here in order to get this guy to go this way and so forth to make it explode, blow it up or send them away from each other. Okay. Alrighty. Everybody following that? So that's just, uh, and then if you want to find, the, you know, just, you know, if it's three charges, uh, K is constant. So it's going to be, uh, okay. So if I'm looking at the potential energy here, let's say that this is you know, one, two, three, then I just have that picture here. So I'm going to uh, do Q1, Q2 over R12, because that's the distance between those two guys. Then I'm going to do Q2. Q3 over R23, and then I'm going to do Q1, Q3 over R13. Was this this one test from last year? Uh, like, Very similar. Yeah, the yes. triangle. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the same. Well, then we were talking about the uh, gravitational energy in terms of. Uh, uh, this guy, so to be, uh, so instead of these being charges, it'd be masses, so it'd be M1, M2 over R12, et cetera. So we just change the constant. So this will be the uh, kind of the, the electric potential energy, and this will be the uh, gravitational. The same thing. 
same physics, same idea, um, <clears throat> change of constants and uh, go from uh, charges to masses. This U in here is just basically the, I'm, I'm signifying that there's uh, potential energy within the system, inside of it. That's why I put U inside. It's visual. You get that? Yeah, it's a system, totally. Every time we're talking about potential energy, it's a system of two or more objects. Yes. Uh, even in this context with uh, electric potential, it's a system of two or more objects, but it's not potential within. See, it's potential at some point, arbitrary. So that each of those charges could set up its own field, electric field, at that point. Um, so, okay, so let's, oops, oh, yes, okay. So now we're going to obtain the value of the electric field from the electric potential. You'll see that they depend on each other, not the same. As I keep talking about electric potential, I'm trying to, I mean, um, think of it as if it, that there's another way to say, yeah, electric potential, electric potential is basically that, that region through which a field can act. You don't need a field there. Let's kind of see if I can explain it a different way, but that's, Um, all right for now, I suppose. Um, we know that they're uh, definitely not definitely not the same. Um, when looking back at uh, this equation here, we went we charge went from high potential low e dot ds. Um, you know, we know that this was a voltage difference. So um, we can say delta V, that's algebraic, but calculus notation would be dV, it's the same thing. And this term in here would be the dV. Um, e dot ds, but in particular, it'd be negative e dot ds because if, if we recall, we are um, losing our potential energy from a to b because a is high and this is low. This would be zero minus a non zero number, so this whole thing is negative. Just given you know, background again on why this is negative. Then if we wanted to get the electric field, it would be the negative derivative of dV dS, or we can say a particular direction, call it dx, x-axis, y or z. So that would be the equation for uh, electric field. We get an electric potential function, take the derivative of that with respect to x, and we have our field. Uh, just for example, and then, you know, we can generalize this as, now oh, this would be on the x-axis, but generally speaking, we can say ER or R would incorporate all the uh, axes and say negative dV dR. So I'll pause on that and uh, go to some other stuff. So, okay, so that's X, this is general. Uh, let's say that we have uh, the electric potential as a function of all three variables. 
you know, R compro composed of X, Y, and Z. V is a function of X, Y, and Z. Well, then the electric fields in their respective directions will be given as these equations, del V, del X, where this is a derivative. This, uh, this is, derivatives. Yeah, that's right, that's right. This is a particular type of derivative, partial derivative, because we're holding, we're taking a derivative with respect to X here, but the other variables are fixed. So the other variable C, one variable changes. And then we go to X and Z are gonna be fixed derivative, derivative with respect to Y. And then X and Y are fixed derivative with respect to Z. So those equations work like this. Um, and we'll see them uh, in practice when we uh, do some samples. But those are what you call their partial deriv derivatives, where a function is a, uh, you have a function in terms of multiple variables, and we want to take a derivative of each one. Uh, well, uh, uh, when, you, when you do that, uh, it's a partial derivative because you're, you're taking a derivative with one, one, each variable at a time, one variable at a time. Mm -hmm. And uh, whereas the other one is you have one variable in question, f of x. Okay, the derivative with respect to x. Is there gonna be some sort of like uh, del operator on e if it's like e x, e y, and e z at the same time? Like all, all three directions, like what you taught us in quantum mechanics where there's the, this inverted triangle thingy? Uh, that's different. Uh, the inverted triangle, oh, yeah. Well, that's basically the Dell operator. That's basically, yeah. This this is essentially, yeah, I now understand your question. Yeah, this is basically Dell V, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you are taking the derivative uh, with respect to all the variables, partial. This is a gradient which, invo which involves the derivatives of all the variables. Yeah, that's what the upside down triangle means is a gradient. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's leave that. Let's do some examples. Enough talking. Um,